good day and welcome to everyone listening and joining us on another very exciting episode of Comply or Die. I'm your host, Kyle, and today we're going to talk a little bit about APIs. So with us, we've got Kabir from Lean. Who is Kabir? Quick little intro from my side, CEO and founder of the American startup called Lean. Um, Lean are in the API and cybersecurity space, and I'm not going to get into too much more on that yet because that's, well, that's exactly what we're talking about today. Kabir's background includes a lot. Um, experience and expertise in gaming, digital advertising, as well as SaaS industries. Previously worked at Typeform, and you'll hear a few stories around that come through today as well. He's also a founding member of the Forbes Business Development Council, and he holds a bachelor's degree in business. Kabir, it's such a pleasure to have you on the show with us today. Thank you for taking some time out of your very busy schedule. We are super, super excited to have you here. Um, and maybe just to kick things off and get them going, apart from what we've added in, anything else that might be insightful or that you'd like to add in for the listeners? Likewise, Cal. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. No, that was a great introduction. I think you covered most things and, and we'll get into the details of what it is that we're doing at Lean. Thanks, Kabir. So, I mean, to cut straight to the chase, good place to start, obviously. Like we said, we're going to talk a lot about Lean today. Maybe taking the listeners through a little bit of the history around it. So we know that the initial idea of Lean was a little bit different. So can you maybe just walk us through what the journey of how Lean ended up being the company that it is today? Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of founders will tell you that, uh, you know, there's there's no such thing as overnight success. And, and, you know, we're still a very young company, so we're pretty far from considering ourselves a successful or meaningful company, which is, of course, our ambition. But it's uh, it's been a challenging but very interesting journey to get here. Uh, we, so I, I'm, I'm the CEO and one of the co-founders. I have two other co-founders, Neil and Akash. We got together as a team to work on a completely different idea. That's, that's very, very different that, than what we're working on in the cybersecurity space uh, today, the version of Lean that is now public. We actually got together to build an idea around or explore an idea around customer success. Our hypothesis was that this is a very critical function within SaaS companies in particular, and it's an underserved part of the market. There's a lot of tooling out there for sales folks, account executives, and so on, but customer success is generally uh, underserved as a market. So with all of these amazing things happening in the world of AI, and ChatGPT had just come out, and and uh, there, there was a lot of excitement around that. So we were exploring automations and co-pilots and tools like that that we could build for customer success teams. We didn't have much success with that particular idea. So uh, as good funding teams should, we kind of paused and we thought deeply about what sort of expertise we have as a team, what large trends and opportunities are out there. And the idea for Lean actually came from Neil's experience, who spent a lot of time in the security space and had the particular problem that we're solving for now. I'm happy to go into that uh, if, if you'd like me to. Please, I think those sort of journeys like you you said and made mention of, I mean, I, I'm not fortunate fortunate enough to call myself a code founder like yourself and, and potentially many listening are, but these sort of stories are hugely exciting. So please carry on. Yeah, so the idea for, for Lean came about, as I said, based on Neil's experience. He used to work at a company called Blue Voyant, which is, a managed detection response and threat intelligence provider that works with several hundred fairly large enterprise and government customers. And the problem that he and his team had there was that they had to build a variety of integrations in, in the security space, especially as the company grew and they started to go into different segments and they had a diverse set of customers that they were trying to serve. What they noticed was that the security stack started to change pretty dramatically. And every time a customer was onboarded that had a different security tool that they were using compared to the, the existing customers they had. It was his team's responsibility to integrate the data from that particular customer's environment, normalize it, correlate it with other data that existed in their environment. And only then did it become useful to automation workflows within that customer's environment. And it was just a really painful process. This was a never ending battle. Every time they got a new customer, they had to do this. Existing integrations kept breaking because there's, of course, breaking changes made to APIs all the time by the upstream vendors. So that was really the inspiration for, for Lee. We, uh, you know, Neil first thought, hey, if I have this problem, chances are others do as well. And we went on this validation journey after we scrapped the previous idea 
And uh, sure enough, we learned that this was a pretty pervasive problem, not only within the segment of other vendors in security, but also for security teams operating at scale that have, in a lot of cases, dozens of tools in their environment, and they're just trying to wrangle the data from all of these different tools. And uh, that was what set us down down this path. And Kabir, I mean, what really stands out for me on that first leap, I mean, maybe a thank you, because it's, it's people and companies like you that are taking away that manual repetitive headache, like you're saying. And I mean, we are, we're in a, a very modern AI driven day and age, aren't we? Where instant gratification maybe is and isn't the right word to use. But again, if there's a process that's very manual and tedious to do and you can automate it, well, pretty obvious you would want to do that. Um, so, I mean, maybe tying that and, and exactly what you've mentioned into a little bit around the the importance of APIs and the importance of interacting with so many different APIs and maybe just some use cases from your experience with them and how that's really benefited projects that's been able to be integrated with that. Yeah, I'll use a couple of examples from, from different industries, actually. So I've, even though I didn't come from a security background, this is my first startup in security. I've spent a lot of time working with different APIs and, and building integrations more in the SaaS uh, world. So previously, I used to be at a company called Typeform. For listeners who aren't familiar, Typeform is a form builder. They build beautifully designed forms to the web that are conversational in nature, kind of different experience than Google Forms that most people might be familiar with. And the nature of forms is such that the data is not really useful if it stays within the form builder. You typically want to send that data to other places. Maybe you're using it for lead generation and you want to send that data to your CRM, like a Salesforce or HubSpot, or you want to do some type of project management work. So you create a task from that form within Asana or Jira or, or some other tool like that. So I had the great fortune of working with a couple hundred integration partners at Typeform, and, and it was all predicated on being able to interact with their APIs. To me, APIs equals automation, right? If you if companies build with an API first mindset, there's two parts to your product. There's the internal development work that happens, and of course, you, you want to make it easier for your other product teams if you use a services-based architecture to create extensibility within your product internally. But then there's a whole other world of letting developers and partners that exist outside of your companies build extensibility into your product. And I think the best companies out there that have lived that uh, that philosophy and, and done a very good job at it have built with an API and partner-first mindset. So, and, and I think that culture has existed for a long time within the SaaS space, and it's now starting to gain more traction in security, which is, of course, part of the reason why we're starting this company. But I think it's very critical in, in security. If you're investigating a threat or you're trying to build some type of automation, chances are that the data has to come from multiple sources that you're then trying to correlate. And it's APIs that enable all of this. Uh, let's, let's use a simple example, right? Something like your EDR agent, like a CrowdStrike or a Sentinel one or Microsoft Defender for Endpoint gives you an alert and the alert is going to in most cases, an overwhelmed uh, security operations team that might be dealing with thousands of alerts on a monthly basis. How do they know that this is uh, a true positive versus a false positive? They might need to enrich that data with external threat intel feeds or with additional context, let's say from their uh, mobile device management platform to understand the context of who is this alert related to, right? Is this an alert related to the CEO's device or is it an intern's device? What is the internal context? And only then can they make that determination, right? Right there in that example, you see that the data is coming from two to three different sources to then help them make a decision. And that's the type of flow that, of course, Lean can can help these teams with, but uh, so can other products that help them sort of merge data all using uh, a, the foundational sort of API layer from these different products. And Kabir, I think what, what's really key on what you just mentioned there as well is the value proposition around it as well. So obviously, yes, there's the the gain of automation, but like you you said, and and key words there that are I mean are so useful, help someone or help a company make a decision. And exactly like you're saying that you the expectation is that you've got these tools set up to provide that value, 
and how they're delivering that value. Something like endpoint detection is going to alert you. Like you said, there might be something significantly wrong or a threat that is is really vulnerable um, and being able to have it set up and yeah, make that decision to help and stop something impacting even further. Um, so maybe, I mean, we've spoken about some of those real world examples and you've already brought security into the conversation really nicely. So potentially for a lot of listeners that we, we get on this podcast typically, are your startups, um, companies really interested in the security mindset of things. So touching on that point, and I, I often call this the, the golden nuggets in, in this podcast, for a startup, how do you utilize those APIs in a secure way? I mean, you've already touched on, on the value side and connectedness, but if we're thinking about that insight into data, I mean, like you're saying, you, you're connecting something to automate function, but it has access to data. How do we address those security concerns? Yeah, that's a good good question. So there's the thing with, with what we're building here at Lean is we, so we brand ourselves as a unified API for security data, which is essentially a new category within security. There are a couple of other companies that are doing something similar to ours, but uh, it is somewhat of a category creation flip. And we're often confused with uh, API security companies, which it's a pretty well-established uh, practice and, and sub-segment within security, but I think it's very relevant to what we do as well, where uh, I think there have to be, of course, really good security practices and a security-first mindset that's incorporated when companies build these APIs and they expose them. It's essentially exposing external parties to uh, what could be very crucial and, and sensitive data, right? So you want to make sure that your authentication and authorization scopes and all of that, those are what really well defined. And there's, it's pretty well established at this point in terms of how, what good API architecture could look like. Uh, and then for companies like Lean that are getting access to that data, we also have to have a security first mindset in terms of how we store and manage access to that data and make sure that it's being used for for the right purposes. So there's a technical layer to it, but then there's also a, a business layer to it where we ensure that every one of the customers that we're working with, we, we, we vet them, we vet their use cases before giving them access to, to, to this sort of data. You, you somewhat, without putting you on the spot too much, yet, you're somewhat of a pioneer in the space. Like you've already said, you're sort of in a, a unique position where it's it's not your run-of-the-mill API solution. If we look forward to the future, uh, I, I mean, without giving too much away and trying to put too many more competitors in the space with you, where do you see the space going? What are what are the next steps? What are potentially the things for customers to to really be excited about in the space? Yeah, so I, I think there there's a lot of scope to expand this this vision that we have for security. We so not only are we a unified API for security data, we also are building what we refer to as a security data fabric, which is a concept that has existed in other parts of software. So I'll, I'll use a few other examples that, that might drive this point home for listeners. There are companies that have existed in the customer data and product data space like Segment, for example which solved the problem, which is now a Twilio company. They got, a, got acquired by Twilio a few years ago. The problem they were solving was that customer data, or let's say an e-commerce business, or let's use that example, existed in a lot of different data silos. So if you think about a typical customer funnel, someone lands on your website, maybe they came there from Google, right? So that's one data point and that might live in uh, your Google Analytics uh, dashboard. Then they click on a bunch of pages on your website that might live on your product analytics dashboard. Then they make a purchase that's done through Stripe. So now there's some data about them that lives in Stripe. So right there, there's three different sources, all related to the same entity, which is your customer. What Segment did a very good job of was pulling all of that data together and making it really easy for these companies to look at unified records about their customers and, and build segmentation, that's why they call it segment. And I think a very similar business model or way to interact with this data and pull it together is needed for security. And that's the mission that Lean is on, is to 
try and pull together these different entities within security that are relevant to security teams. And this data is usually stored in these data silos and it's really hard to stitch it together. So that's that's the type of thing that we want to help security teams with, but also other security product companies that need to build and manage integrations with the rest of the ecosystem. It, as I mentioned earlier, it's kind of a never-ending battle where there's constantly new... The great thing about being in security is that it's such a dynamic industry. There's constantly new products cropping up and for other companies in the space, you have to keep building those integrations to be able to pull data from there, especially as those tools gain adoption. Your customers are coming to you and say, hey, I really want this data uh, within this particular app. So they have to put a lot of product and engineering resources into that. So that's the type of thing that uh, Lean and other companies in the space can can help both security teams and other security product companies with. And it, it's really refreshing to see in a way you're in the space because of the passion and drive with it. But like you say, security is, it's it's a ever-growing and changing space and landscape. And I suppose in a startup frame of mind, you have to go with it, right? Like you're saying, you can't have a product developed. Um, I mean, all the future plans you've just spoken about now, so those are going to change and that, that it, sort of scope of work is going to keep growing week on week, month on month. On that point as well, I mean, the, the passion around it, suppose it's a little bit more personal. We're talking a little bit less about the product now. What is that, that real satisfaction and joy and love and passion that you get from the space that you're in at the moment? Yeah, I, I think it's you're all of the best advice that you say really seizing the entrepreneurs and investors, gift of founders is around being obsessed with the problem rather than being in love with your solution. And I think that's the philosophy that we subscribe to here as a founding team at, at Lean. We, we, we really believe that this is a problem that needs to be solved in security, right? That the, the core problem that we see is that there's just too many tools and products within security, and it's really hard to kind of pull this data together like we've been talking about. And the other shift that we see is that these security teams are becoming more and more technical. And this is, of course, a shift that's happened in the general software space over time. And, uh, you know, as more software developers and product people entered the workforce, there was this whole category of dev teams that emerged within the typical software world. And we think that shift is happening within security now, where security engineers and production engineers and people like this that are fairly technical folks have really complicated jobs. It's pretty well established that there is too few of them. Right, this expertise that they bring uh, from a security perspective is is a very valuable skill set, and and there aren't enough of these folks. So there is a very high need for them to be able to automate part of their jobs, and that requires some type of middleware layer that allows them to customize and orchestrate the apps that they're already buying within their security stack. So that's the core problem that we're trying to solve. Uh, that we we're an early stage startup, so we don't necessarily have all the answers. There's a lot of things that we could build in the future, but that's the core problem that we believe needs to be solved. And that's the particular audience that we feel is uh, underserved. And, and we would love to, to help these folks enable them in different ways to hopefully drive better security outcomes for the entire industry. And on the, the type of personnel you're dealing with, again, slightly different avenue, but I, correct me if I'm wrong, I would, I would hazard a guess and say in your space, being a co-founder, you probably found yourself on quite a lot of sales calls inadvertently or, or speaking to those sort of personnel, maybe a, a question around debunking. And I, I really don't want to dismiss in your last answer. Thank you. I think you gave the perfect title for the session we are speaking about being obsessed with the problem, not in love with the solution. I, I think that was absolutely golden. Um, you might need to get that as a tattoo or something at some point. But um, in, in terms of the personnel you deal with, debunking the myth. What is the one trend, if there is, that you often find you on calls that people understand your product is there to solve, where it might potentially be a bit different? Do, does that happen? Yeah, I, I think people are often, so the, this confusion with an API security company versus a unified API, that, that, that's the type of thing that's happened on a few calls before, because one is a very well-established type of product category within security, and what we're building is not, so... I think when people realize 
what it is that we're building and the angle that we're taking, they're, they're, it's, it's very refreshing to them right? when we're talking to these security engineering teams in particular. The fact that we want to put them front and center and we want to give them the flexibility to orchestrate rules that they're already buying. Uh, I think the thing with security and the reason so many products exist is because all of these products have some type of opinion on where you should be spending your time or what is a real threat versus not or from a compliance standpoint, you know, what you should be paying attention to versus not. And we don't want to be another tool that adds to that noise of this here's where you should be focusing your time. We want you to actually be able to orchestrate those tools and give you additional signals to understand where you should be paying attention and how you should automate some parts of your job. So I think when people realize that that's our vision and that's our approach to the market, they're pleasantly, pleasantly. And I'm sure that, I mean, that's exactly what you want, isn't it? Because you're growing a, a startup in that space. And Kabir, I mean, maybe on that final point, I think we've gone a good process through the life cycle of the company, what you guys do. Is there anything else in particular that, I mean, stands out right now that we maybe haven't spoken about today that you'd like the listeners just to get a bit more insights on or, or just to add in general? So I, I know, of course, the, the a lot of the listeners that tune into the show care a lot about compliance, I, I assume. So uh, we can talk a little bit. We didn't really uh, touch on that. So I think companies like like Sightail, of course, are, are doing a great job of automating what are other otherwise very time-consuming sort of compliance workflows. And your platform is built on top of the layers that we've been spending a lot of time on in the session, right? Where APIs are so key to those automations of pulling evidence for both from a point in time perspective for a particular audit or, or workflow related to an audit, or even from a continuous compliance perspective. And uh, we're very happy to be uh, part of that workflow and, and to help pull in some of those signals from a security perspective, right? From your security stack, from the, your EDR tools, your vulnerability management tools, your application security tools, and so on. And I say this both as a partner of platforms like Sightail, as well as a consumer of those platforms, because we recently went through our SOC 2 type 2 audit and, and uh, that, that whole process earlier this year. And especially as a startup, I think it's super, super valuable, right? And you want so much of this process to be automated and you want it to be as efficient as possible. Um, so it was a great example of sort of dog fooding and moving the value both to us and, and hopefully to side tail of what is possible with these types of automations. And uh, I would love to see more of that happen in the compliance journey. And it's, it's certainly the way that we plan to run a lot of our compliance processes going forward. Thank you. We really appreciate the feedback and the, the sentiments is very much shared. Um, and, uh, and all of us at Sightel very much look forward to watching lean growth from success to sec and many more years of continued partnership. So, I mean, in, in, in wrapping up there, thank you for your time today. It always is such a pleasure to speak to people like you, taking time out of a, a very, very busy day, busy building a company um, to share some insights and thoughts. So thank you, Kabir. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I look forward to having another chat with you very soon. Thanks so much, Cal.